Today's video is unfortunate because there's a video out now called Deji lied about his training, former coach exposes the truth. Now, I don't know anything about this video, but obviously Solomon's got some things to get off his chest, and I have a feeling it's going to disappoint a lot of people. Breakdown, let's go. Hi there, my name's Solomon. Um, I previously trained Deji. Releasing this video to kind of touch on a few things that happened throughout camp and my experiences that I had um, training Deji. He relocated in early December. We were supposed to start camp around that time. It was very sporadic at the start. We didn't really get going. Him having COVID in December didn't really help with the whole situation. Daly said he only got a couple weeks with Deji because he had COVID. Did he get it twice? Or is someone lying? But COVID is a lung issue, right? Like, for the most part, it affects your lungs. The ability for you to breathe, trying to train while having COVID would be terrible. So, I, that's shocking. There was a lot that I felt like he needed to work on. Set up a game plan to fight Alex. Wanted him to be able to press on the front foot. Because Alex being the taller fighter, boxing on the back foot would be very tough for Deji to be able to win on a decision. Say whatever you want about what happened during the fight, but that was the correct game plan. To have Deji come forward off of his jab, finding ways to use not only head movement, but his feet to navigate the reach and length of Alex, work on the inside, push Alex back into the ropes, into the corner, and utilize those quick hands and power that he does have. This was the right game plan, 100%. There was times where, you know, I'd be waiting at home, um, ready to, about to leave, and, you know, then you may cancel on me, 30 minutes before training which did become difficult at times because number one i want him to train number one i wanted him to be fit and strong and ready for the fight and number two is just like for me i'm waiting at home i'm giving that time to someone i find it slightly disrespectful to be totally honest to do that to someone this is what i was talking about man this is what i was talking about because now you're seeing the truth but all i can say is what i see and if this is true and that solomon was having to wait up for deji not even knowing if he was going to show up to training, to a session, to any of it, and then getting home late because either Deji showed up late or he just didn't show at all. That's f***ed up, man. That shows a lack of commitment for Deji on his own part, but more so, it's so disrespectful to the people that believed in Deji. You can't do this to people, man. When people rely on you and you say you're going to do something, you f***ing do it or don't. There's no in-between. After that, we had a couple more training sessions. There was a couple of tough sessions we had. There's a few things that had been said in a few of the videos that you released, which kind of is the main reason why I'm releasing this. Um, just to clear a few things up. First of all, he done an interview with Wade regarding that training was maybe too easy. This is how it happens, man. I'm not trying to be dragged into anything. I don't want no drama. <laughs> Wade's interview with Deji, it's all lies. <laughs> But Deji said that he felt like he wasn't getting pushed and he was needing someone that would really go in on him because when he's in the deep end is when he learns. Now, we agreed. I said, that's fine. I can get more professionals in, which I did. I had people on standby coming in for the next training session. Following on from the conversation on the phone, everyone seemed quite happy because I said, OK. But after this training session, there was no more contact from Deji and his team ever again. And I had heard through the London boxing community that he had moved camp to uh, Daly, who he's still training with now. This type of shit gives you such a bad reputation. It's one side of a story. It's another side that was told directly to me during our interview, right? So I didn't know any of this shit. Nobody knew any of this, that there wasn't some sort of amicable, okay, this isn't working. We're going to go in another direction. Not that. That's not what happened, apparently. Deji and his team just went, nah, we good. Sorry, not working out on our end. We're not going to tell you that, though. We're just going to jump ship and go with Daily. I think everyone found out that Deji had changed camp from a few things on social media. So Deji reiterated that in a video with Wade. Speaking of your camp, I... Hey! Okay, this is some fucking Inception shit. What? Let me, let me just make sure. Okay, I had the Punisher because Deji was supposed to be the Punisher in the fight. By the way, I had a brand new camera... For this shoot, because I thought I broke my other one, it was a madhouse. This is this is when I still thought I was gonna be, you know, announcing on the card. Speaking of your camp, obviously there was a change, uh, especially recently, and uh, now you're with with Daily and uh, King Kenny uh, of all people. So talk to me about the change in camp, what you thought that you needed to do, and and what it's been like since you started working with Daily. So uh, right off the bat, 
I love Daly as well. <laughs> he's the man, he's, huh? He's the man. Like, the thing is, what I needed, I needed to be pushed. See, this is the boilerplate, same thing that we heard. I mean, literally that we heard, but now that we're hearing from Solomon that he needed to be pushed. I, I don't know if it's, again, a communication issue where Solomon was like, we're trying to push you, but you're not being receptive to it, or that Deji just truly felt like what he was doing was better than what he'd ever done before, so this wasn't... So he was, you know, being pushed, but he thought he had more in the tank where Solomon was like, if I push this kid anymore, he'll quit. You know, I don't know if it was one of those things, but there's definitely a massive communication issue. So I have some footage here from sparring um, alongside Riyad. We also have some sparring that he'd done with Kay. And I'm just going to analyze it a little bit and talk about what I wanted Deji to do in sparring and what really happened. We'll be generous here and say that Deji throughout this has been disingenuous at least with the way things have gone here with Solomon, are we about to see Deji straight up lie about how these sparring sessions went? Because that's, I mean, come on, bro. I asked Deji to kind of have his hands up, wanted him to walk okay. forward to put the pressure on the... This is the same stance and a bit of the same mannerisms we see from Deji from the Alex fight, Deji right? Have his hands up, wanted him to walk Very... Heavy on the lead leg, but not necessarily coming forward. Heavy on the lead leg with his weight, but still very iffy to pull that trigger. Practiced a high guard. We were trying to practice that leading up to the end of the camp, which he find, found quite difficult. Also, Deji has a tendency to... Again, we saw that 100%, and I feel like this is what he's about to talk about. Deji slipping shots and then not being able to follow up off it, right? Deji completely slides under this right hand, but his eyes, his eyes are at his feet. I can't even see his face, and I know his eyes are right here. I know that's where they are. So there's no way he's following up off this, so instead, he shifts in, gains the lower side of the clinch, and then we break. Which is a great thing. It's a natural ability that he has, and I wouldn't want to take it away from him. And the only issue is that when you have a fighter that reads that, like my fighter does in Riyadh, um, because I schooled him to keep him on the end of a long There it is. Long arm. You can't do in Riyadh. See how the uh, second right hand from Riyadh here doesn't go over his head, and instead it sticks him right on the headgear? You can't just stay Look there. at the difference from this first right hand that he throws. Just goes right past him. And this is just as Solomon's talking, so this is perfectly lined up, right? We see him throw this right hand. Boom. Misses with it, right? Okay. So in the face-off video with Alex, Deji said that Riyadh was an easy sparring partner. I was getting the better of my sparring partner already. But as we can see from the footage... Oh, man. I mean, that's not a great look. I don't. You guys can't see it, but come on, man. It's not a great look, man. <laughs> this kind of stuff I'm not a big fan of. I guess I understand where Solomon's coming from by, you know, putting out the, the actual knockdown here. Like, I understand that. Right hand, caught Deji leaning, clean shot, puts him down, right? Caught him off balance. But this stuff, I, I mean, okay, I get it. Like, Deji spoke ill of, of the sparring partners, said some very disrespectful things of uh, Solomon. So, fair play, you know, it, it is what it is. So, in the face of video with Alex, Deji said that Riyadh was an easy sparring partner. I was getting the better of my sparring partner already. But as we can see from the footage. <laughs> he's having some trouble there. <laughs> time, time. Being an easy sparring partner? I don't think so, to be honest. First off, yeah, I mean, listen, Solomon's. I'm not a big fan of releasing sparring footage if it's not okay from the fighter to do so, but the way that Deji was disrespectful and said the things that he said about his sparring partners, about the training he received from Solomon, I'm, I'm more than okay with show, showcasing that the things that he said aren't necessarily in line with reality. As far as like the laugh track shit over the top of it, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that stuff. It, like it doesn't... I don't know what that does. Maybe it helps Solomon feel better about the situation or just to like stick it to Deji a little more. But I will agree from the context that we have, which are these clips, sparring wasn't as easy as Deji was making it out to be, which again is at the least disingenuous and at the most a straight up lie. But you guys let me know down below, man. What do you think about this video? Should Deji have probably handled things differently? I think so. Um, moving forward, does Deji need to keep boxing? 
I'm never going to answer that question again because it seems like every time I do, something new comes out. I'm just going to say this. You better commit to whatever you're doing in life. doesn't go for just Deji. It goes for every single person that watches this. Because if you don't and you tell people that you are and those people rely on you, then you're not only disrespecting yourself by, not, by being lazy and not giving full effort, but you're disrespecting them. Don't do that. What happens next for both people? Uh, I hope they find a way to just stay away from each other and respectfully, amicably just go about their business. Apparently in August, some announcements are coming. I wouldn't be surprised that Deji's one of them. So what happens in the future for both Deji and Solomon? Guess we'll find out.